Praise be to Allah. Allah Ta'ala has allowed us to reach to this stage of Ramadan and with Allah Ta'ala's fadl, His blessings and with His mercy until now, we have been able to implement good and excellent deeds and we pray that Allah Ta'ala accepts our deeds that we have done up to now because these moments in which we are gathered together, Alhamdulillah, they are very uh, you could say acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the very beloved moments, beloved actions. And at this moment Allah ta'ala has given us the tawfiq to gather, to perform his dhikr, to remember him. And to understand the greatness of this and the importance of this, then this is a very uh, excellent ni'mah that Allah has given to us, that we can never repay this favor. May Allah allow us to appreciate the importance of this deed, because Ramadan is about to conclude. It is about to finish soon. And most definitely, if I speak honestly, then every person on his speech, on his tongue, uh, and from the heart and from recognition and awareness, we see that we weren't able to do anything in the time that has passed. Allah gave us a great name of Ramadan. We didn't value this. We didn't appreciate this month of Ramadan. We were just occupied in our work, in our daily life routines. Okay, fine, alhamdulillah. We're grateful to Allah that Allah Ta'ala has given us the fasts and the month of Ramadan. But this great name that Allah gave against that, we didn't fulfill the rights of this month. We didn't fulfill the haq that was due. Now, the point is that this month, that Allah has given to us of Ramadan. There's a ruh, a spiritual base, a foundation point, a pivot point. And it's the pivot point that allows all of the goodness to be achieved. Doesn't matter how beautiful a person is, how big and strong he is, if he doesn't have the ruh within, then he cannot achieve it. But even if a person is physically weak, but if the ruh, the spirit within is strong, then that person has a strong foundation. He has got a basis, a platform upon which he can build. But if you don't have the ruh, doesn't matter how strong you are, and you can see, seem beautiful, etc. But if he doesn't have a ruh within him, then everybody will say, oh, this is, this is just a waste. So the importance or the strong foundation comes from the ruh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in this Ramadan, there's a ruh in this Ramadan. There's a foundation, a pivot point. Yeah? A platform. So we need to realize what is the ruh, the spirit of Ramadan. Because alhamdulillah, if we realize what that is, then with the fadl and karam of Allah, we still have time. There's a lot of time left. Great days and nights are to come. It's in front of us, this final third, the last ashra. Then we'll succeed. If we realize, so what do we need to now realize and learn? What is the ruh of Ramadan? If we take the ruh, if we take the ruh out of Ramadan, then the Ramadan, the month will pass just like the previous and the months to come after. But as I said, everything has its strength and and physical strength. So if we bring the ruh into our Ramadan, then our whole month of Ramadan, it will sparkle. It will become good. So the ruh is what? What is the ruh? It is such an ibadah that Allah Ta'ala has kept in Ramadan. If we fulfill this ibadah, then we will achieve Ramadan, the objective of Ramadan, if we realize what is the spirit of Ramadan and we implement that spirit of Ramadan. So the ruh, the spirit, the foundation of Ramadan is dua. It is dua, prayer, supplication to Allah, asking from Allah. Request, I'm telling you the ruh of Ramadan, from the first of Ramadan until the last day of Ramadan. And all these Laylatul Qadr nights, what do we say? Do dua, do dua, pray. If you take dua out, if you take the prayer supplication out, then nothing will be left. So dua, supplicating to Allah, requesting Allah. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that dua is very important for us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most, the importance is, is placed on dua on prayer, 
pleading to Allah, supplicating to Allah, requesting to Allah. So in reality, this month of Ramadan that Allah Ta'ala has given to us, it has a strong relationship. And to make the connection between the human being and Allah, Allah says that only that person would do dua to Allah who considers Allah as Allah. Who considers that Allah is the one to give. Allah is my data. He is the one who will give. Even if I'm a sinner, I am a waster, I am bone idol. Whatever I am, but Allah will give to me. It's just like the connection between the mother and the child. Just like the child, he maybe will disobey the mother, but he runs back. The more the mother maybe even hits the child, the child will run back to the womb, the breast of the mother. So if we want to see our link with Allah, the Allah says that do you Allah says, if do you have the connection with me? Allah says, I know that even if I'm displeased with you, even if you did wrong actions and sins, all year long, but alhamdulillah, today when I open the doors of mercy, then he's come back running to me, my believer, because he wants to ask from me, Allah says. So dua, supplication, pray to Allah. In reality, this is the ruh of Ramadan, the spirit of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with regards to dua, he's kept three factors, elements in dua. Three factors. Now, whichever person Allah gives the ability to make supplication, this is a big gift from Allah. Yes, whichever human being, believe Allah, gives the ability, the tawfiq to do dua, then in the hadith it is stated, for that person the doors of rahmah have opened up, the doors of jannah have opened up, and the doors of acceptance have opened up. Subhanallah. So this is dua, the three elements of dua. Three things open up when a person does dua to Allah, raises his hands, supplicates to Allah, then immediately three connections are made with Allah. Allah says three factors Three connections are made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahmah comes, the doors of Jannah open for that person, and the doors of acceptance also open up for that person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this speciality of Ramadan, that as soon as Ramadan comes, Rahmah opens up, the doors of Jannah open up, and Allah's the doors of Allah's acceptance also open up. Subhanallah. So my brothers, this is the, the month of dua of making supplication. Alhamdulillah, we will have made du'as to Allah. But we should now make supplication with this recognition, Allah, the nights are coming as well. Allah, you've given us this month so that we can request to you, plead to you, beg to you and ask from you. Ask from you. So in this, the special thing here to realize is that du'a, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the whole year. The rest of the year as well, we can make du'a. We can supplicate. So what's the difference here? The difference here is that Allah Ta'ala was also given special days and nights. In the, for example, Allah listens in the third part of the night or straight after the faraid actions. Or Allah Ta'ala has given us the special moments in which He hears the du'as. But in Ramadan, Allah Ta'ala has kept aside three times that you cannot get in the rest of the year. Look at this carefully. And the, let's focus on this. The three special times in Madam where Allah Ta'ala listens to the du'as, and we cannot get these moments in the rest of the year. This time will not, these moments will not come in the rest of the year. It's only Ramadan that can give us these three moments that we can make the du'a to Allah. So be careful about this. What are those three moments? Morning time, when we uh, keep the fast, when we observe the suhoor, sahri time, when we are taking, uh, partaking in the pre-dawn meal, that is the very high uh, percentage of acceptance at that time of dua. That when a person gets up in the morning and has the pre dawn meal at the time of Shahri Suhoor, then definitely make dua to Allah at that time. Because it's a, it's a very special time of dua. Whatever difficulties, problems, issues you have, at that time ask from Allah when you are partaking in the pre dawn meal. But because we are in a rush at that time, let me eat quickly and have a meal. Uh, but what a big time we waste at that time. So what should we do? What should we do is that we should prepare in advance. We should prepare in advance. We should have such an, a preparation that after eating, if you get even five minutes spare time after eating before dawn, sun, uh, the Subha Sadiq time comes, then ask from Allah at that time, whatever you need to ask from Allah. Because that time will not come back. That time, those moments will not come in the rest of the year. So if we collect all of our needs at that time, when it's Sahri time, pre-dawn meal, after eating, keep aside 5, 6, 10 minutes spare. After eating, don't look, oh, it's only 2 minutes left, I've got to eat, I've got to eat, let me drink water, let me drink tea. No. Have the meal in a bit of advance. That is such a great opportunity and a time to ask from Allah at that time. And we waste that time. We waste that time. And the second time in Ramadan, which we don't get during the rest of the year, is when we are about to break the fast. 
when we're about to break the fast. And shaitan, he attacks at that time, when we're about to break the fast, at that time people are talking, having discussions, and insan's focus is, uh, what shall I eat now? Let me eat quickly. Let me prepare the meal. Let's put the food mat out. So we, we worry about our hunger. And that is the time uh, that the person's at that time feeling, it doesn't feel like he, he wants to ask from Allah. And at that time, we are in desperate need. We should ask from Allah at that time. It's such a, such a valuable time, the iftar time, breaking the fast. And we waste that time as well. We waste that time as well. So that's the second time in Ramadan when du'as are most easily, readily accepted. So we should prepare at that time to make du'as to Allah. We should ask from Allah at that time. And the third time that Allah has given to us, which we won't get the rest of the year. And what is that time in Ramadan? At the time of Taraweeh. Yes, so Taraweeh Salah, an extra prayer that Allah Ta'ala has given to us in Ramadan. The whole of the Qur'an is recited at that time. It's Qur'an upon Qur'an upon Qur'an. And lengthy recitation with ease and enjoyment. And a person's reciting Qur'an and others are listening. And everyone's immersed. People are stood and he's listening to the words of Allah. He's going into sujood and prostration. And this time is very essential that we will not get the rest of the year. And during the year, maybe we'll not get Ramadan next year. And Allah Ta'ala has given a lot of time at that time. We should see that 30, 45 minutes, an hour it takes. During that time, Alhamdulillah, we should ask from Allah at that time. You know, you get the, the spare time in between the two rakats, or you get two minutes break at various intervals. Straight away make dua to Allah at that time. The intervals in between the rakats, the rest break periods. So at that time, ask from Allah as much as you want. Request and plead from Allah at that time. Okay. So now, this is such an ibadah, worship dua. Let's listen to this as well. That the barrier that we put in front of us, the restriction, the hurdle, is I don't know if my dua is going to be accepted or not. Um, what's the other factor? So the guarantee Allah has given 100% in the hadith is 100% guarantee that every human being's dua is accepted. It's accepted. Allah Ta'ala said that I accepted shaitan's request. When shaitan was... Uh, expelled and he made a dua because he knew Allah Ta'ala would accept the request and he had the, he had the ma'rifat he had the knowledge of Allah he knew that Allah Ta'ala's glory is that whatever Allah, we ask from Allah Allah will definitely give so on such an occasion when a person Allah said himself that if you ask from me and it's such a great time Allah has given and we don't ask think about it how sad how unfortunate we don't ask from Allah so dua Allah Ta'ala accepts the dua. It is such an ibadah that dua is never rejected. Never rejected. And the beauty of dua now. Let's look towards the beauty of dua. Alhamdulillah. Allah is Rabbi, He's the Khaliq, He's the Malik. He knows everything about us, our needs. And the person who makes dua, Allah Ta'ala starts to love that person, starts to love that person so much. Allah knows that this servant of mine who's asking from me, that he's not worthy. And this thing will give him loss. So Allah Ta'ala Himself stops that action. And doesn't give him that item he's requesting from. But this doesn't mean that our dua is not accepted. No. Rather to the contrary. I am grateful that Allah was asking this for this item from Allah. And I wanted it. For example, I say, Allah give me this house. Allah give me this asset. Give me this building. I like this. Okay, I'm asking God from Allah. I'm asking for this... Um, this item from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows that He is asking this from me. And He is beloved to me, this servant of mine. So why should I give Him this? Because this will give Him pain. So Allah says, I'm not going to give Him this house. Because if He goes into this house, He'll get a lot of problems, difficulties, He'll get a loss, He'll get reduction. And He's asking me for this. So this is against my shan and my glory. That if I give Him such a thing, that's not good for Him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stops that, puts the brakes on that. And we should be grateful to Allah that Alhamdulillah, You didn't give me this item. And most of Definitely this was for my benefit. Allah saved me from this work or occupation or asset that I was asking from. So Allah knows better from better than me, and I should be grateful that Allah, Allah didn't give this to me. So Allah says, Your dua hasn't been rejected. What do we think? Oh, that this dua hasn't been rejected. Allah says, Don't worry, don't worry. This house you were asking for, I will give you something better than this, better compensation than this that would be better for you. Yes, so this is called Ni'mul Badal, where Allah Ta'ala gives something better than this for us. 
So Allah says that we become so lacking of hope, broken hearted, we leave salah, we leave reading Quran, we start leaving the places of daras, we leave the company of the wali of Allah, and while we're doing ibadah, we turn our backs, we do U-turns, and we lose all hope, and we become broken hearted and dejected. We, oh Allah, I've asked you so many times, you don't give to me, why should I ask anymore? I'm so tired, I don't get good health, I don't get the wealth I want, I ask Allah for these assets, and Allah Ta'ala doesn't accept my du'as. So think here, so so this is not asking for dua because we are now blaming Allah astaghfirullah rather we should be grateful to Allah the pious elders have stated the people of Ahle Dil you, you should be grateful to Allah now you should be grateful that I've saved you from those Allah saved you from that asset or requirement you wanted that's not good for you and number two Allah has given you better than that over and above that so what else do you need? Why are you complaining? So we need to change our mindset mentality. So it's first number one, guaranteed, every dua is accepted. If you don't get what you ask for, then you get something better. And the third thing, that Allah has put us in a position to make dua, then the greatest position, which we won't understand now, while we're listening, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that if He doesn't give us these two things, Allah loves His special servant so much, or His, whether she's a brother, a sister, or whether he's a brother, Allah says, okay, if I give you something, compensation, then it will only stay in the world. If you don't get a house, I'll give you another worldly item, material attraction. Okay, if you don't get a son, I'll give you a daughter. Yes, if I take you out of this illness, then I'll give you another test. But this whole cycle, circle, will be linked to this world, this temporary world. Yes? That for example, Allah says, if he's asked me for this house and I've not given the house, this is temporary. Then in response to that, I'll give him a nice car or something else that he'll become happy with, which is beneficial for him. But his link, that link of those material things is with the world. But that will finish with the world when we leave this world. But Allah says, I love you so much, my servant, that Allah Ta'ala states, I won't just give you something better over and above this, but in reality, in relation to this, that when you come to me in the akhirah, in the hereafter, then I'll give you permanent glory and success and happiness, which is forever and above more for you. And it will be such a great gift. That time from your mouth, you'll be shocked, your jaws will drop. My mawla, I did no actions to deserve this. How comes you gave me this? I can say this is a loss in the world. Allah will say to the angels, that bring his du'as, he used to ask me, and I didn't give him this, then show him his du'as. And when he will see his du'as, Allah will say, show me now, did you want this du'a here or there? Allah, this is your shukr. All of my du'as, even if you didn't accept in the world, but you gave me such much better here. Allah said, that, did you want in the world or here? And I will say, Allah, I'd rather prefer for you that you gave me in the hereafter. So it's obvious here, that this is such a du'a in ibadah, that if we do this ibadah in Ramadan, then this is accepted beyond accepted with the fadl of Allah. With the father of Allah. Qabool upon Qabool. Accepted upon accepted if we ask from Allah. So we should ask from Allah direct. We should ask for Allah for the goodness. Now here, I remember a point. Hazrat Muhammad Wasa rahmatullah alayhi. Hazrat Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned this event. That this dua that I remember, a very beautiful dua, my brothers. What is the dua? We should understand that we want the whole, this will give us the benefit from this whole gathering and I will give you da'wah, invitation that use this dua in Ramadan or implement this dua in Ramadan. It's a beautiful dua, alhamdulillah. Because a friend of Allah, the friends, our pious elders, when they do an action, then we should imitate them in their actions. And because behind that there's a, there's a hikmah, there's a wisdom. And this we realize from the company of the walis of Allah. So we see here that a dua that many centuries have passed or many decades have passed about this dua today in Baltimore we're hearing that this sheikh made this dua. How did this reach to us? Because those people who stay in the companies of the walis of Allah, then their actions of the walis of Allah, they grab those actions and then due to the sobat, the connection, the company with the wali Allah, those actions come to a company that my husband used to do this, my sheikh used to do this, he used to eat like this, he used to sleep like this, his actions, his habits, like this. murids, the students, they speak about the Sheikh, because the Sheikh is close to Allah, he is the Wali Allah. So when you imitate the Sheikh, then that action takes you to the heights and close to Allah. That I saw then Hazrat used to break a fast, this was his action. And today you will see great Walis of Allah, Qabirin, great uh, in the Kitabs, their words and their actions and the experience are written. They're written. Yes, we'll see this. Hazrat Sheikh Ladis, Rahimahullah. His moments are there present that when he used to break fast, he used to do this, he used to do this action when he did this, then this would happen. And this is within the insan, 
their actions. And when the students saw this, they witnessed this, those who had company of the shaykh, the students, they knew that every action of our shaykh, this is from Allah bin Allah, Allah has made my shaykh beloved to him. And in such beloved moments, Allah will make his wali do good actions which are valuable. So the du'as of the wali's wala that they ask with high um, volume and sometime loudly, they mature du'a. So hear this du'a. Hear this prayer and remember this du'a. That it was asked. It's a very beneficial prayer that he made the shaykh. What did the shaykh say in the du'a from his from our rabbal? He was asking from Allah, if this du'a in Ramadan we ask this du'a, I will say Alhamdulillah. Whatever we need, we will attain with the blessings of Ramadan. And that du'a is, Hazrat uh, Rahimullah said, that my mawla, my rabb Allah, oh my rabb Allah, I don't need anything. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. But Allah, please cast your mercy upon me, your blessings on me. Please be merciful me to me in such a way that give me such a sincere friend. Subhanallah, what an ajib dua. That Allah, you don't understand, Mukhlis, that all friends are friends. I am your friend and you are somebody's friend. But this is friendship just until to the extent of shaking hand. But one is a Mukhlis friend, a sincere friend who loves the friend. Who shares in the sadness of the friend, who shares in the happiness of the friend. From the depths of the heart, he sacrifices for his friend. This is called mukhlis friend with a khalas. Which is what's he asking? That Allah, oh my Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have we ever asked this? We probably have never asked this. We should try and ask for this, subhanallah. That oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my Rabb, you'll get the whole deen from this dua. Remember this with the fadal of Allah, if you make this dua. If you recite, you will go into Jannah reciting the kalama. If you, if this dua of yours is accepted, inshallah it will be. That Allah give me such a friend, give me such a sincere friend, mukhlis friend. And what's his speciality, the friend? Allah, of this friend, that when he... When, when he sees in me a loss, a deficiency, or a sin, or a deficiency, or a defect, then that he warns me when he sees a negative me. Say, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. What a great dua. Subhanallah. Do you find a friend like this? Will you find a friend like this? Even the blood relations, they look at your money and your pocket. They won't ask you, that, are you bringing haram annex to me? You'll go into hellfire, you'll burn in hellfire. If your mouth comes now, then where will your money go? No. They will say, if it comes, let it come. The houses are coming, the cars are coming, we're getting the food. And even the relations say, it's okay, he's earning haram. But the sincere friend say, subhanallah, subhanallah. With the blessings of Allah. The sincere friend of ours, of yours, if we have a sincere friend, he'll keep an eye on those things that will give us loss, negative effect. He said, what are you doing? This is haram, this action. They don't do this, this will give you loss. This is a very bad punishment you'll get for this. This will give you severe loss. You're trimming your beard or shaving your beard. Don't shave your beard. Nobody will tell you this in the world today. I tell you the truth. So much. Only they told their nations and their people. These words, when a friend tells you, we, these kind of friends we start to hate. We start to dislike them and run away from them. We say, oh, please go away from me. Don't tell me. Because he keeps pestering me. When he goes in front of me, he comes to me. He's not take, telling you your defects. Wallahi, he's not criticizing you. He's not criticizing you. Rather than appreciate the feedback and love that person, such a great, great trap he's saving us from. The, the, the severity of mouth he's saving us from this, this friend of us. Who's warning us. He has no need to tell us. That I'm doing wrong? Okay, fine, carry on doing what you're doing. Does this happen in the dunya? Who tells you about good and bad? That, oh, it's fine, let him do haram. No one cares what you're doing. It's alright, I just need the money and the material things. But the friend who has a khalas, sincerity, who loves you, who has regard for you, he will tell you good things. First and foremost, he won't save you from the trials of the world. He'll save you from the fire of Jahannam, whose fuel is men and stones. And nothing in the world can save you from that fuel. Men and stones in Jahannam. But your mukhlis sincere friend, Alhamdulillah, who shakes your hand, and we run away from them. The mukhlis, no, 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 when I see him, he gives me nasiha. No, he is sharing your sadness. He loves you. He wants to save you from punishment. Subhanallah, he'll warn you. He won't praise you. He won't praise you. He won't praise your status. If there's a big man, big shot, he becomes your friend. And he becomes a friend of a poor person. And he'll know that he's a big shot and he's got money. And he, but he's got good capacity. Even deeny wise, he, he's got capacity. But he's got friend, the friend. That Allah's given him these rewards. Allah's given him a position in deen. He's given him ilm and knowledge. May not be that he wastes this or loses this. So he'll tell him about those actions through which he can secure his deen. And with love he'll present his defects that don't do this action. Otherwise this will go wrong for you. 
This will give you a negative uh, impact, a negative result. Subhanallah, say subhanallah. So with that mukhlis friend, he will have a strong connection which is greater and better than, stronger than the blood relationships. Yes, and this is what we call, he'll do islah for his friend. He'll improve his friend. He'll rectify his friend. And this happens... Now where there's a wound, if you put the salt on the wound, then you'll feel the bitterness and the pain. But if the insan realizes that this friend of mine, he didn't need to tell me good things, he didn't need to warn me, he didn't need to teach me good things, he didn't need to save me from the trap of the hereafter. Did he need to do this? No, my friend didn't need to do this. Is there anyone in the world who will want to save us? Who, who needs to tell us to pray salah? Or who will come in the world and beg you and hold your hands and say, there's dhikr today after Asr, please come, please come to Asr Salah. Who, who has the need to do this? And if you hear his words and accept, and you accept the invitation and you come to Asr Salah today and sit in the gathering of dhikr, then imagine your hal after that. Right now, Alhamdulillah, dhikr won't even end. From the heavens, the angels will call out that we have heard your forgiveness has been earned. Then can there be a better friend than this for you? The hadith is there. That that friend who is pulling you, dragging you to the dhikr of Allah, he's telling you that in my mind and heart, I realize that this gathering of dhikr or action of dhikr is very great. And within minutes, he'll, he'll earn your salvation for you. Because the person who comes to this gathering is earning. So he's not taking you off track. He's not forcing you. He's not putting his hands in your pocket. He's not earning or eating money from you. But he loves you. He loves you. And due to that muhabbat, he wants for you to come and to attain the benefit from that gathering or that action. So now, before asking for food and water, make dua that Allah secure my deen. How Allah, that if a friend of mine doesn't come to me, if a mirror doesn't come to me, who shows me my defects, that everyone else in the world praises me, you are this, you are pious, you are good. But those people, who, you'll get many people who praise you and say, Assalamu alaikum, marhaba. Many. But you will not find many friends who will want to save you from the fire of Jahannam. And what person is there in the world today who doesn't have a defect, who doesn't have bad aspects and factors? When you get such a friend, then who's the third? Allah's rahmah is the third element. Allah Himself is present. In that friendship, Allah Himself says that, Subhanallah, that you two friends have a link for the sake of Allah, it's due to me, Allah Ta'ala says. It's due to me. Now I will come in between you. Allah says, what will I do? That this person's heart, I will install into this. That you don't know what's the defects within him. And from your tongue, I will take away the defects from this person. What a great system of our mawla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is called the, the companionship based on islah, rectification. We run away from this. No, 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 no. If you go to Hazrat, he'll say to you, come to dhikr. If I go to him, he'll say, do this and stop doing this. So what? What difference does it make? The Shaykh knows that he's on the wrong path. He has only so much time in life. He's got these moments in the day, he can do good things. And he's got other occupations in life which he's busy in. So, bidnillah, from the tongue and the advice, the nasi of the Shaykh, Allah wants to rectify the student. So, Allah's rahmah comes in as the third element. And Allah gives the Shaykh the ability to guide the student. So, those people are worthy of praise. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, for those individuals, if he gives a human being such friend, say subhanallah, subhanallah. If Allah gives human being such a friend, such a dose, that apart from the feeling of sadness and dress, distress that the friend holds in his heart for his friend, he says, Allah, save my friend from Jannah and save me as well. That if you have a friend, he's standing, eating, walking, talking, eating, drinking, transactions. His whole life is based on the fact that Allah, I want you to save my friend from Jannah. He has more fikr for his friend than himself. That if he prays salah and jama'ah, that I have worry. How do I bring him to Salatul Jamaat? Salat in Jamaat. How do I take my friend away from sins, from haram earnings? Uh, uh, death is near. How can I advise my friend to do good? This is my dose, my friend. He loves me. I love him. So I want to take him with me into Jannah tomorrow. So what is the thinking of that friend? It's a great thinking indeed. So this is the thinking of the Nabi, Alhamdulillah, that without any greed, he starts to go after his friend. I want to correct him, rectify him. I want him to don the imam. I want him to keep the beard. I want to teach his children dhikr. I want to improve his home. Is there anyone today who thinks like this? Is there anyone who is the figure of this? Tell me. Very difficult indeed. Say subhanallah. So hard to find a friend like this. So those who don't have a friend like this, Alhamdulillah, then to get this friend, that we select friends in a wrong way. Let me tell you this. Yes, not everyone who shakes your hand is a friend. Maybe you think that this is my friend, he will do good things for me. Maybe he's not your friend. So this good uh, result we should leave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ramadan is present today. 
that the nights of Laylatul Qadr have began. So ask for this from Allah, that Allah give me such a friend from which my dunya and my akhirah can be made through His company. Will we ask for this my friends? What a great dua subhanallah. That Allah give me a sincere friend who can tell me my defects and tell me my downfalls and make apparent my defects and do my salah because I think I'm good but I'm a monkey, I'm an animal. And I know that in your kitab, this secret will be unraveling in the grave because until the mirror doesn't come in front of me, I cannot wear the imama. If the mirror is in front of me, I cannot apply the surma to my eyes. If I don't have a mirror in front of me, I cannot make my beard tidy, neat and tidy. Isn't it? So Allah, give me a mirror so that I can see inside myself. Allah, in my life, give me such a mirror, a reflection, such a friend, without whom I'm living my life now. I don't know, is my salah correct? Are my words correct? Is my decision of my life say, sahih? That this business I'm going into, is it right? Is this halal or haram? So that he can take my hand and stop me. If I'm wrong, when I get such a friend, then Allah make that friendship strong, compact, so I can hear his words with attentiveness, so he's not displeased with me, and I don't leave his attention, his side, because he's mukhlis, and this is the dua I need to ask. Okay, we've asked that. So the second thing shall I tell you? What is it we should ask for? SubhanAllah. In the dua. Yes, so the friends of Allah, they match the words with the Qur'an hadith. So this is the tafsir of the verse, رَبَنَا اَتِنَا فِي الدُّنِي حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا دَمَنَا This dua is a tafsir of this verse, subhanAllah. This dua that we learn from Allah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? So the second dua that Hazrat asked for, subhanAllah, that my Mawla, my Rabb, Allah Kareem, Rabbul Kareem. The second element in the dua is the second part of the dua that he would ask, that Allah, according to my needs, what words? According to the needs of my life, Allah give me a risk in which there's no quarrel, no argument. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. What words here? That Allah, Allah, according to my needs, According to my needs. Now our needs, does anyone know more about our needs than Allah? Who are we asking from? Our Mawla, Allah. Allah knows everything about our needs. That He needs this, that if I give Him a check, like this, His needs will be fulfilled, in which there's no quarrel. If He goes beyond that, if He runs more than that, then what will I get? There'll be quarrel, argument, distribution, and the biggest... Uh, Fasad will be on his deen, he'll go towards haram, he'll go towards wrong actions, and his dunya will become destroyed. But according to his needs, according to his standard of life, when that, according to which he can live his life with ease, he'll get food, chapati, chicken, pilau, zarda, according to his needs, every man has his desires about what he wants to eat, a taste in life. It's not necessary that you are doing this and put me on the straw mat. Or if you say that, uh, just give me a, sh- a shack to live in. Islam doesn't say this. If you say that according to my needs and my taste and requirement that you give me Allah, you understand taste? According to my desire that I want, that Allah, the passion or the hobby or the needs or according to my sort of enjoyment, Allah, according to my character and emotions, that you give me a gentle emotion and character. If I like, I want to wear good clothes so that they'll stick to my body. Allah knows my taste. So when I say Allah according to my passion and enjoyment and need, Allah will give to me then on that level. On that level. Yes, if I have a hobby or desire like this, I want to earn halal so that I have a nice car. So that I can travel, mashallah. I can uh, travel with my wife and children if I have this need and desire. That I can do Umrah and Hajj time and time again. I have a desire. So if I ask for my own uh, ends, Allah give me a little bit, then I'll say, okay, give a, I'll take a little bit. Because this is my passion and desire. I say, subhanAllah. So look at the words of the walis of Allah. I say that if you sit for a little while with me, then you'll get good, uh, good habits. SubhanAllah. So what did he say, Hazrat? That Allah give me that according to my desires and needs and enjoyments and, and requests. So Allah want to go on Hajj and Umrah. So Allah give me halal earnings. Allah will give halal. And Allah give me such earnings that every year with ease I can go on Hajj and Umrah. Allah will give. If we ask, Allah will give. Allah will give. So this is the dua of Ramadan. Yes, pure dua. This is the ruh of Islam. We do a lot of ibadah, but this is the root, the brain, the heart, the stomach. Allah says, Subhanallah, you stayed in sajda. But if you asked me that you wanted everything, you had the resources, but you became mutakabir because you thought you had everything. Allah says, the person who doesn't ask for me, he goes into kibr, into pride. So what is this Allah Ta'ala says? What is this? Allah says, rub your nose on the ground and ask from me according to you need. Make yourself wretched like a zalil, as totally useless. And ask from me openly. Just consider you have nothing to your name. Nothing to your name and ask from me. Allah says, ask from me as much as you can. Subhanallah. The person who asks from Allah is very wealthy. Remember this. He is the richest person in the world who asks from Allah. Yes. 
that if I ask according to my needs and desires and enjoyment and requirements, then everything that is in my mind and heart, what I like will come into the dua. Nothing is left that is not according to my needs and enjoyment. What do we do? Allah give me this, Allah give me that, Allah give me this. And Allah knows that this is all useless, this is not good enough for him, it doesn't suit him. How Ramadan we waste, all the duas we waste, just ask a little bit. First I ask you, the ah, your deen will be coming into control. When you ask Allah for a friend of Allah Mukhlis, and the second, your dunya will come into control. End of story, alhamdulillah. And your dua is accepted. Your dua is accepted. The third element of the dua, shall I tell you that? Or shall I not tell you? What is the dua? The third element, will you do this? Why, Haji Sahib, will you do this? Yes, because Ramadan is still here. In front of Ramadan, the nights of Ramadan are coming. So don't waste this dua, because Allah has put this into my heart. We're sat here, and I've told you the elements of dua. Otherwise, I have to be selfish and miserly and do the dua myself. But this is love. Say subhanallah. And this is Muhammad love, that if you open a secret in the gathering, so everyone can benefit. So everyone loves each other here, sitting here. We've come for the dhikr of Allah. So my love could not accept that the mamul of our life are presented to you. That my, my routine of life are presented to you. And look in life, that Allah Ta'ala fulfills the needs of life. What is my taste? My enjoyment that gets fulfilled. It seems to me, it feels like I'm a king. He's got everything he wants. I have nothing. Nothing. Ten years I'm not working. I'm retired. I had a small shop. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. And never did I spread my hands uh, here and there. Never did I consume haram with the father of Allah. Why? Because I dua. That Allah give me according to my need and my taste and my request. So when I eat, I should have this. And I have a desire to eat. I want to eat good. That I want this halwa. Alhamdulillah, every day I get that halwa. I get it. I've got it present. Because Allah has created a taste within me. A requirement. So these small things, they become great things indeed for an individual. Great things indeed. No? Of course they do. So what a beautiful dua. And the third element of the dua, Allah Akbar. If that's accepted, then job done. Everything accepted. And then Ramadan, you have succeeded. Shall I tell you the dua? Will you do this dua? First put your hands up and say that, yes, I will do this dua. Put your hands up. Yes, otherwise you'll waste it. So make the intention. Okay, listen to this dua. And definitely we should make this dua, Allah Akbar. What is that dua that we should make? Hazrat taught us that Allah. And this dua, this is the third dua. Third dua that we should ask for. The third part of the dua that we should ask for. That Allah... That give me the prayer in Jamaat. Allahu Akbar. Say Subhanallah. And this enjoyment, ask that person who prays Salah in Jamaat. And he asks from Allah. And he runs to Jamaat. Subhanallah. The person's heartbeat. They need to go. I don't want Jamaat to pass. I don't want everything. I swear by Allah. Everything else looks bad for that person. He starts to dislike wife, children. Starts to dislike. Starts to dislike business. A deep sweat comes in the body. The people tell me this. They're not with me because I'm a worldly person. I'm a worldly person. And you know better than me. But people tell me you pray salah, pray salah in jamaat. Because this is their feeling and emotion. Subhanallah. And they, may Allah allow this to come to me and you as well. Because that person who prays salah in jamaat, they tell me. They swear by Allah that, that this action, shop, business, this is all a waste. My wife, who I love, my children, everything, this becomes for me, I even dislike this worse than poison. And inside, a harchal comes, a, a feeling comes, a passion comes, a desperateness comes, a whatever's in front of me at that time. Even if I'm reading Quran, I don't feel like reading Quran at that time. Even if I'm doing dhikr, I leave dhikr, be whatever. No action, nothing in the dunya is close to me. Nothing is except in my heart does not feel. And my heart feels that I run, I leave everything, and I go to that call that's coming from the masjid. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah. Allah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Somebody asked, Hazrat, what's the reason that such a passion comes inside you? You said, you, oh, you foolish person, you think that uh, that person's calling, uh, but he's not calling, my Rabb is calling me to come to Salah. Allahu Akbar. What a great ta'aluk and connection. There's the call of Allah that's come to my eyes. Oh my servant, come, oh my servant. Come, oh my servant, I'm calling you. Anti, I'm calling you, come. Come, I'm your Rabb, I'm waiting for your sajda, your prostration. Come, come, subhanallah, subhanallah. So when a person gets to this maqam and status that such a relationship is created with Jamaat Salah, he prays Salah, prays Salah, prays Salah, the link with Allah becomes so strong, so strong, so bland, that the call of Adhan, it's not the call of the Muaddin who's calling of the Adhan. It's not that a beautiful Adhan, subhanallah, everyone's swaying to the Adhan. No, even a basic Adhan, that is the person... Uh, he's calling the adhan, he's not got a melodious voice, it's not his adhan, it's the call of Allah, he says it's the call of Allah that's coming to me, the Allah is saying from the heavens, that he calls our name, the O Ibn Fala, Ibn son of this person, this person, come, why don't you come quick, quick, Salah is about to start. 
Salah is about to start. So for this, the Ashikain, Alhamdulillah, what do they do? They, from the beforehand, they start to prepare for Salah. Salah. Not here, they start to prepare from home. We don't even have the tawfiq, we have a home, we have hot water, clean home, such a nice place that we can do wudu at home, recite duru, do dhikr and come to the Asabala. No, we run away from home with the miswak in our mouth, we have no adab, we don't know how to do adab, we don't follow the sunnah way of doing adab, we put the miswak, I'm not criticizing anyone my friends. Again it comes, I'm telling you the defects, defects. Not the defects, I'm not criticizing so that we can rectify and improve our lives. Don't be displeased. Now after this, where will you go? You'll go to Jannah, isn't it? If you do the action. So, so is this friendship or enmity? No, don't criticize. So this name of Allah, Allah has given us a home. He's given us the hot water, what do we call this? The, the, boil, the boiler is burning, the boiler is burning, Allah has given us warm water, cold water, mechanic sitting here, ask him, oh my boiler is broken down, please quickly come and repair it, I don't have time, I don't have time, so be grateful that my boiler is running, I've got warm water at home, first class taps, Alhamdulillah, sanitary fittings, Allah you give me sukoon, I can sit down in the sunnah way, I'll make a place to sit down in the sunnah way and do wudu with ease, 15-20 minutes I'll go and do dua to Allah, and my children they should learn wudu, then Alhamdulillah, I wash my hands and my body put on good perfume because my Rabb is calling me. He's not the king of the world who's coming to me and I have to wear a uniform. Get to him. This is my Rabb, my Lord calling me. And then I'll wear that uniform that Allah Ta'ala loves the most, the most precious uniform which is the libas of the sunnah. Libas is taqwa Allah mentions in the Quran. Because I'm going to the presence of Allah so I'll present to Allah all those things that he likes in his court. The libas of the sunnah. And it's not necessary that it's fard or wajib. I'm not putting down conditions. The most beloved action Allah Allah Ta'ala likes Imam. This great thawab in this. Isn't it? The greatest thawab. Yeah, we're ashamed of this. Oh, how sad, how sad. We're playing games with our mola. That Allah, a man is ashamed to come to you that I cannot wear that libas to come to you that you like and prefer. Look at this thinking. So tariqa is do wudu, wear good libas, apply good perfume to the body, and then go and depart. On every footstep, the angel will give you the dua for the word of the hajj and the umrah. The hajj and the umrah on every footstep. Rahmah will come, peace will come. You're asking dua alongside the alhamdulillah. A beautiful feeling will come upon you. Just like the hajji who departs to go on hajj. Subhanallah. So you will do five hajj in the day. Five hajj, the same feeling, the same salute. My Rabb is calling me. I will apply perfume. The fragrance is coming from my body, good clothes. You're swaying to the masjid five, ten minutes in advance. You come, alhamdulillah, recite the dua. You enter into the masjid. You do tahitul masjid, two rakah. Then you pray nafal. And then you do a little bit of dhikr of Allah before salah. Qalbi dhikr, dhikr in the heart. You'll do that. And then your whole body will be prepared. A beautiful point I'll tell you in passing. In passing, very valuable point I'll tell you now, is that very regularly we say that I don't get enjoyment in salah, I don't get peace in my salah, tranquility, separate topic inshallah, if life is there, I will discuss this with you, the how to earn the tranquility in salah, what are the reasons we don't get this, what's the solution, but I'll tell you one point in passing, I've learned from the pious elders, because we learn these points from staying in the company of the Wali Sallallahu I sat in the company, in the, at the footsteps of my Sheikh, 30 40 years, at the company of the great pious elders, I'm a jahil, I know nothing, I don't know tajweed, recitation, nothing. But I know, according to the Shaykh of Hazrat, Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, you get this from picking up the shoes and staying in the company at the feet of the walis of Allah, you don't learn this from the kitabs. So if I looked at his life, I observed, I wrote, Alhamdulillah, those factors are useful full to us today. I'm giving you uh, words of love today. I'm not giving you speech, I've invited you, thinking you've come. So I'm presenting to you this, uh, this, this knowledge of love. And if we practice this, then there's benefit for us. Yes. So as I was saying, that look, that having enjoyment in salah and for whispers to come in salah and to bop in salah and to pray salah in a rush, we're wasting this. The salah of fajr that went early today will never come back. Today, salatul fajr, you prayed, you will never get that salatul fajr in life again. Either we wasted it, we destroyed it, or we made it a treasure of jannah. Yes, so yesterday. Yesterday's Fajr is gone. Tomorrow's Fajr will come. That's written in the kitab that this person prayed Fajr in this way. This was his passion, desire, emotion. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So the reason for this is what? What's the reason that when insan comes to salah, he has no tardi, becomes running to salah, all the thoughts of the dunya in his heart and mind. He's thinking about his shop, his home, family, whoever's taught him, his teacher, the students. He takes all of the dunya, comes into the masjid quickly, and he doesn't want the first guard to go. He says, Allah Akbar quickly, and recites Tana, starts salah, and all of the dirt is within that person, and he continues doing salah, and he doesn't realize his salah has passed him. Wasted. 
wasted. So the pious elders, what was their ma'mul, their practice, the pious predecessors, because never in their hearts and mind came Musa with in the salah. Everything they did just like us. And in those three minutes, they came to the masjid in advance. And in three minutes, they did dhikr on their lataif, on their lesson. SubhanAllah, so the pious elders do this. Soon as they saw, when they prayed the sunnah before salah, then they're free from sunnah. They didn't look left and right. They didn't read Quran at that time, no. And I saw many shaykhs doing this. They were, were started doing marakama, dhikr in the heart, and their lataifs on their lessons. And in three minutes, they got rid of all the wasawis of shaitan and the bad thoughts. They stayed immersed in the dhikr of Allah. And then when they started to pray salah, before salah, all the wasawis whispering bad thoughts, evil thoughts, disappeared from their minds and heart. And in that three minutes, all your latifas, the portion of the body, start doing dhikr of Allah. Allah, 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 because they learned dhikr from a shaykh, from a teacher. Okay. Yes, rather then what happens? As soon as the three minutes pass, the dunya, subhanAllah, three minutes is enough before salah to remember Allah. And those three minutes, you're still, you're swelling in the thoughts, in the, in the presence of Allah. Then ikama is called, hayala salah, hayala salah, stand for salah. And then with nur in your hearts and minds, you enter into salah. And then when you pray and you recite surah ikhlas, then your half body is, is uh, reciting the number So is there no difference here? There's a difference here. That's what we need to do. So such a great salah. We shouldn't waste, alhamdulillah. Many, many benefits will loot and take with Salah. Salah is the greatest ibadah. Okay? So may Allah Ta'ala, we do dua to Allah that Ramadan, the most precious nights of Ramadan are here. Rather, we should see there's a speciality of this month that Allah Ta'ala has given because this is the ruh of Ramadan, dua. What is the ruh? Ramadan, this action. Yes, that we've learned. So we say, how many farda in Salah? In Salah, Tul Fajr. There's one Salah Tul Fajr in the day. And in Ramadan, there's one Fajr. And is it five? No, there's one in the day. So we should see that Allah Ta'ala has increased in Yibadah. Faraid is the same. But, but Allah has increased the dua. Say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So how much has Allah increased dua? That Allah Ta'ala has said that this time I'll accept your dua. In the morning I'll accept your dua. So this point has ended now, Alhamdulillah. So for example, you read Fard, Allah said your dua after that, or if Jummah time, I'll accept your dua. Allah says that every moment I will accept your dua. Every moment, with that feeling, every moment has now become that time of acceptance. That every second has become the time of acceptance. Every sa'ah, every moment of Ramadan. Tell me, 30 days and how many minutes and seconds in those days? Because the dua is the rule of Ramadan. So Allah has open, open invitations of my friends. Every moment to ask Allah for these three duas. Ask for the duas, alhamdulillah. But these three duas, all the duas come. The best business, the best life, and the best ibadah comes. May Allah Ta'ala give me and you the tawfiq. Ameen. May Allah Ta'ala accept. Ameen.